This is how our planet currently looks. The image of a traditional two-dimensional map triggers familiarity in our brains. Well, unless you're from North Korea, in which apparently this is how they view the world, with North Korea being slap bang in the middle, of course. Now, if I was to remove a country or two, the world map instantly looks off. Our brains love recognition, patterns and familiarity. So seeing this is kind of weird, right? Well, tell you what is even weirder is what our world map would look like if sea levels were to drop by 1,000 metres. This drop reveals many underwater geological formations and structures and completely changes the world map as we know it today. Earth has now reclaimed millions and perhaps tens of millions of squared kilometres of new land. Some countries, which were islands, are now connected to other countries, and or other countries have significantly increased their size. So let's take a deep dive into the most notable changes. So let's start with the countries down under, New Zealand and Australia. Australia has now turned into a big fat blob, but that's the least of the country's concerns, as the northern part of the country has now expanded across the Timor Sea and has now merged with Indonesia. This has now formed an entire new landmass. Tasmania has also now merged with mainland Australia. It's hard to give an exact figure, but I'd estimate that Australia has perhaps gained 10 to 20% more land. Across the Tasman Sea, we have New Zealand, which looks completely and utterly different to how we know it today. Not only has its North and South Island merged into one, but its shape has completely transformed. Parts of its land now extend quite easterly. The country is now pretty much unrecognisable, whereas Australia, although now a different shape, is somewhat still similar to how we know it today. Southeast Asia has now essentially all connected via land. Islands like Sumatra, Java and Borneo have all fused together in conjunction with the Philippines to attach itself to the rest of Southeast Asia, with regards to countries like Vietnam and Thailand. Now, the decrease of sea levels by a thousand meters hasn't impacted mainland China too much. However, the region known as East Asia has significantly changed. Japan's islands have all now linked up, connecting it from Russia in the north to China in the south. This has then resulted in South Korea now becoming a landlocked country, sandwiched in between China, North Korea and Japan. The Sea of Japan has now become a salt lake. China is thrilled with this hypothetical scenario, as Taiwan is now part of China. Well, physically anyway. If Taiwan continued to act as a republic, then China's inevitable invasion would be significantly easier by land. Another country or countries who are happy with this drop in sea levels are Bangladesh and the Maldives, who are two of the lowest lying countries on Earth. Both of these countries are currently battling against rising sea levels, which are effectively wiping away their land. But with this drop in sea levels, their countries have become suddenly larger. Slightly northeast of the Maldives, we have Sri Lanka, who is now physically fully connected to India, granting easier access for road vehicles, likely boosting Sri Lanka's economy. Countries that are found further inland and are landlocked see no changes at all, such as the countries nestled away in the Himalayas like Bhutan and Nepal, as well as the Central Asian Stan countries. North of this region, we have the world's largest country, Russia. In this hypothetical scenario, Russia has gained even more land. I have no idea of the exact amount of land, but it certainly looks like millions of kilometres squared. Its land has now extended further towards the Arctic, likely giving them many more opportunities to drill for oil and gas, likely significantly boosting their economy. The main continental landmass of Africa remains virtually the same. It appears to be slightly more chunkier with the naked eye, but there are no significant visual changes. However, when it comes to the island countries of Africa, this is a completely different story. Mauritius and Seychelles have grown significantly. They are now easily visible on our world map. Mauritius especially has now become a much larger country, as its current size is only around 2,000 kilometers squared, whereas in this new world, it is easily 20 or even 30 times larger. 
Another significant change relating to Africa is that Yemen and therefore the Middle East and Asia is now physically connected to Africa, to Eritrea and Djibouti. The physical land connection has also now closed the Red Sea off to the Gulf of Aden into the Arabian Sea, technically now classing the sea as a lake. Speaking of the Middle East, Saudi Arabia has now grown a decent amount. It has now absorbed where the Persian Gulf once was, turning Iraq, Kuwait, Bahrain and Qatar into landlocked countries. Another quite odd and unexpected change from this drop in sea level is the growth of the French Southern Territories, as well as the Herder MacDonald Islands, which have now actually expanded enough to merge together. The islands in their current form are absolutely tiny. They are remote and some 500 kilometers away from one another. But with his drop in sea level, it reveals the land surrounding both regions, meaning they'd combine to create one large landmass. So this is where things become rather insane. What was once Europe is now an absolute mess. The entire continent is now pretty much connected and joined together. The North Sea, English Channel, Baltic Sea and other bodies of water have now disappeared and instead replaced by European countries' land, which has now made the continent pretty much one big giant landmass. The UK is now completely unrecognisable and has now joined up with Ireland, that's both Northern and the Republic of Ireland, which I'm sure the Irish would be absolutely thrilled about. This region here is in fact known as Doggerland, which was once a landmass that connected Great Britain to mainland Europe during the last Ice Age, around 18,000 years ago. As the climate it warmed after the Ice Age, the ice melted and sea levels rose, which ultimately led to Doggerland becoming submerged as we know it today. With sea levels dropping by a thousand metres, Doggerland would once again be exposed, creating this new region of which Western and Northern Europe are now connected. Scotland is now connected to the Faroe Islands, which are connected to Iceland, which is connected to Greenland, which is now connected to Canada, meaning there is a land bridge between North America and Europe. And as Alaska is now connected to Russia, this means you could now technically drive or walk across the entire planet. Italy and Malta have now merged together and are now physically connected to mainland Africa, creating a new land connection between the two continents. Norway is another country which is now completely unrecognisable. It has grown significantly due to the drop in sea levels. Now, the US hasn't changed too much. It has largely retained its overall shape except for its east and southeast coasts, which have now become somewhat bulkier. The state of Florida is also now physically connected to the Bahamas, which in turn is linked to Cuba. This new land connection may not be too well received by the Cuban government, given that a land invasion from the US has now become a possibility. Mexico has a similar story to the US. The country has kept its general shape, but its east coast has become certainly more chunky. Canada has grown drastically. Its current size is some 10 million kilometers squared, but with sea levels dropping a thousand meters, its size looks to have potentially even doubled. Canada's Hudson Bay has now vanished, and as mentioned earlier, the country is now linked to Greenland. Now, South America hasn't changed too much, with the exception of Argentina, which has grown significantly. The Falkland Islands have also grown quite a bit, which has now merged with Argentina. So that is what our world would look like if sea levels dropped by a thousand meters. Now, which country do you think has changed shape the most? I'm thinking perhaps New Zealand, Norway, or the UK. These countries are now completely unrecognizable. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thank you very much for watching.